Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on evolution and specifically going through and doing some cladogram practice. Let's get started on this next video. So what I want to do is make sure that we thoroughly understand what a cladogram is and how to go through and read this cladogram. So let's go through, we'll make a cladogram here that's going to be our example. We're going to start off with sharks. We're then going to move on to finned fishes. We're then going to move on to our amphibians, primates, and then rodents. We get to our reptiles here, and then finally our birds. Now if we go through, we'll look at all the differences between these organisms based on the things that have evolved. So first we start with vertebrae, then we get to a bony skeleton, then we get to four limbs. We see here we have amniotic eggs. Over here we have the development of hair and then we have eggs with hard shells. So let's go through and read this cladogram and make sure we thoroughly understand what's going on here and then how these organisms are related. Okay, so there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to want to go through and look at here. As we move up, we have vertebrae, bony skeleton, four limbs, amniotic egg, eggs with hard shells, and hair located on our cladogram. We're gonna to try to understand and look at the nodes here to really delve into how these organisms are related to each other and how they've gone through and evolved. So if we look at this, well, let's look at the cladogram. Do all of these individuals, all of the organisms and species in here have vertebrae? Well, vertebrae, the rise of vertebrae occurs here on the cladogram. So sharks have them, finned fish have them, amphibians have them, primates, rodents, reptiles, and birds. So all of the individuals as you move up this cladogram are going to have these vertebrae here. Now, if we look at this cladogram here, well, how many of these individuals are going to have bony skeletons here? Well, as we move up the cladogram, the rise of bony skeletons occurs here in time along this cladogram. So fin fish, amphibians, primates, rodents, reptiles, and birds all have it, but the sharks do not. They are not going to have this bony skeleton because this went through and occurred after sharks had gone through and evolved. And we know that sharks main structure is actually going to be cartilage. They're not going to have the same bony skeleton that the fin fish and then all the subsequent animals have here. Now remember, as we're going through and looking at this, we have to remember our nodes. And our nodes are going to indicate where the common ancestor is that allowed for the rise of whatever these two organisms or organisms that we're looking on this cladogram are here. So this is going to tell us something that has occurred, a mutation that has occurred that allows for the certain phenotype to arise and these nodes here along our cladogram are going to indicate our common ancestor common ancestor so if we go through and look at this we could label this as a b c d and then we could put e here and i could ask you the question well, where is the common ancestor between, let's say, reptiles and birds? Is that going to be A, B, C, D, or E? Well, if we're looking upon our nodes here, we're going to see a divergence occur here. So the common ancestor is going to be represented here by the letter E, and that's where we see the divergence of reptiles and birds. Now, I could, also, I could ask you the same for primates and amphibians. You know, where is the common ancestor for primates and amphibians here? Well, if we go down along our cladogram, we can see the rise of that common ancestor here. So that will be represented by the letter C. And the nodes are representing the common ancestors here. Now again, these lines here are indicating the rise of some sort of morph morphological change in the organism that goes through and allows it to go through and look the way that it does. So we can see every organism beyond this line moving up on the cladogram is going to have four limbs amphibians, primates, rodents, reptiles, and birds. But we can see the sharks and the fin fishes do not. Now the other question that I could go through and ask you is, well, what is the most recent common ancestor to, let's say, the birds here? And let's say we were going through, we would just have to find where they go through and converge. And the most recent common ancestor that is alive today is going to be reptiles. The reptiles and the birds are more closely related than, let's say, the rodents and the birds. So I can ask you a variety of questions on how to read this cladogram. We have to understand that the rise of these morphological changes is going to move this way. This line is going to indicate that everything above this part here is going to represent who has that specific morphological change here. Everybody below does not. We have to understand 
that this is representing how these individuals are related based on their common ancestors at the nodes where these converge and then based on the morphology and the evolution of these organisms. Remember, all of this is the evolution of how organisms have changed over time because ultimately if we go far enough down on the cladogram, all of these organisms are going to originate from one common ancestor. All right, so did you guys learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you guys go through and learn how to read this cladogram in detail? Did you guys go through and understand the purpose of nodes and understanding common ancestors? And then lastly, can you see how organisms have evolved over time based on cladograms? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.